Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. Some days you don't want to do a lot of cooking for whatever reason, like today here in Southern California. Well, this week, actually, we're going through a warming spell. It's nearly noontime, and already it's 80 degrees outside, and this is October, and I've got friends coming for dinner. I don't want the oven on, I don't want to be working really hard in the kitchen, but I want to serve something that looks like I worked hard. They're worth it. <laughs> um, anyways, I'm going to be making chicken fettuccine, and I'm going to cheat a little bit, because rather than making a balsamella sauce, I'm going to show you how to cheat to make something that looks like a balsamella sauce, but isn't all the work. So. Let's get into the ingredients first that I'm going to be using for making my chicken fettuccine. I'm going to be making enough for three people. I have two friends coming. This will make three good size helpings. I'll say that this will feed three to four people. Double this if you want to feed six to eight people. So, eight ounces, 227 grams of fettuccine noodles dry from the store. I'm actually going to be making my own fettuccine because last night I made some pasta dough so why not use it. If you want to make your own pasta on the website I have a recipe PDF for making pasta from scratch. Then 6 ounces 170 grams of fresh mushrooms. These are just the store-bought white cremini mushrooms. You don't need anything too fancy for this. 4 tablespoons butter. 12 ounces 340 grams of chicken. This is thigh meat. If you like white meat, you can use chicken breast. Again, it doesn't matter. Two tablespoons of some sort of dry booze, either sherry, white wine, marsala, vermouth. I've got marsala in here. I've made it with vermouth. I've made it with white wine. I've made it with sherry. I've made this many times. It doesn't really matter again, but something to give some sort of tartness to the sauce. Two cups, 473 milliliters heavy cream. Then for the spices, one quarter teaspoon white pepper, one quarter teaspoon ground nutmeg, and one quarter teaspoon ground oregano. This one might be a little bit difficult. One tablespoon of rice flour. I used to buy this in the grocery store. It was easy to find. It was always on the oriental food aisle. I haven't seen it there lately. I got plenty of it, so I have enough to last me for years. But if you want to use rice flour, you may need to go to an oriental store. You could use cooked white flour, cook it a little bit in a pan first, and then you could, or you could use um, cornstarch. I happen to like rice flour. It doesn't add a lot of flavor, and if I need to refrigerate the sauce overnight and use it the next day, with rice flour you have much less tendency for the water and the salad to separate. And then one half cup, two ounces, 57 grams, of Parmesan or Romano cheese. I'm using Parmesan. This is grated, of course, and then salt to taste. This will need salt, even though there's plenty of salt in the Romano cheese. So those are my ingredients for my chicken fettuccine. I've set up my pasta machine here. I'm going to just dust my pasta with some flour and just push this flat. Like so, run it through the machine a few times. Starting at the widest setting for the rollers. I've made a lot of pasta. I mean, I used to, when I was eating a lot of pasta, I'd make pasta almost every day. Because I love pasta. And just one egg and some flour. It's just so easy to make. It's terrible for your waistline though. Again, on the website there is a recipe in the recipe archive for making pasta from scratch. 
Okay, I'm ready to start thinning this pasta down now. I ran it through the machine a few times just to kind of add some more kneading to it, just to make sure that it's nicely smooth. And on this machine, I'm gonna go down to my number five setting. I find is good for most flat noodles. I'll go to number six if I'm making a pappadella. All right, so there's my sheet of pasta. I have to cut this up and then run it through the fettuccine cutters. I trimmed the edges of my pasta. It has kind of a ragged edges where it'll tear a little bit when you're running it through the machine. So now I just want to run this through my fettuccine cutter. And it's as simple as that. There's my fettuccine. Again, you don't have to go through all this work of making it by scratch, by hand, from scratch. You can just buy dry fettuccine noodles at the store and then cook them according to package directions. All right, there's my pasta done. I'm going to flour that. Just so that it, it won't stick to itself. And then as soon as my water comes up to the boil, I will start making my, cooking my noodles. I like a lot of mushrooms in this dish. So I've got a lot of mushrooms here. Just kind of slice these up. Not overly thin, but not too thick either. Mushrooms will absorb a lot of fat while they're cooking, so. I've got a lot of surface area here to absorb the mushroom, I mean, to absorb the butter, rather. You could fry these in olive oil if you'd like. I'm going to use butter. And some people mix olive oil and butter together. I mean, if you have a cholesterol problem, you can avoid the butter and saute these in extra virgin olive oil. Okay, so there's my mushrooms ready to start chopping my chicken. I have this issue with chicken. I don't like to use, I don't like to cut chicken on any board but one board that I have set aside specifically for chicken. I call this my chicken board. I'll cut that into long strips and then cut across it. And there's my cubed chicken. Get the other one to do and then I'll be ready to start cooking things. I've melted my butter in my pan just waiting for the foam to settle down and then my mushrooms can go in. I'm going to saw these for me, saute these for maybe, I don't know, two or three minutes just until they're cooked. They will absorb a lot of that butter. Which is why I use a lot of butter. Might as well get that flavor into my mushrooms. If I have to, I can add more butter or oil later on. And once these are sauteed, I'll take these out of the pan and I'll be ready to start the chicken. My mushrooms are done. 
took those out and put those back in the bowl they came from. Now I'm going to start cooking my chicken. This will take a little bit longer, maybe four to five minutes. I like using my wok spatula because I can easily scoop things up with it. So in the meantime, I'm going to wash the bowl that the chicken was in so I can use that to put the cooked chicken in. No point in cross-contaminating my cooked chicken with raw chicken juices. So here is how I'm making my mock balsamella. There's my cream, my marsala, white pepper, nutmeg, my oregano, Oregano typically doesn't go in a marsala, I mean in a um, balsamella. And there's my rice flour. Just going to mix this up really well. Okay, now I can heat up my skillet again, put this in a skillet, bring it to a boil, and with that rice flour, it will thicken. You'll notice when I mixed my ingredients that I didn't put my cheese in. There's my cheese. You don't want to put it in at this stage because in thickening this sauce, if the cheese was in there, the cheese would melt, get sticky, stringy, gooey. It would make a mess of things. So you always wait until last minute to put the cheese in later on, after you take the pan off the heat. So I've got my heat going under this pan. I'm going to be bringing this up to a boil. You'll notice I used the same pan that the butter was in, why not get that butter and any fond that are, that's in the bottom of this pan from the chicken and the mushrooms, get that mixed in. That'll just give us a little more flavor. And I want to get this up to a coats the spoon stage. You can see how that runs off. Once this thickens, it'll leave a little bit of a coating on my spatula. Not a lot. It'll actually look to be a little runny still. Too much like a liquid and not enough like a sauce. Turn the heat off. Let it sit for a bit. I've actually got my guests coming for dinner time and it's not even one o'clock yet. So this is something you can do in advance. Again, by using rice flour, I can combine everything, put it in the refrigerator, and then heat it up later on, and I don't have to worry about the liquid separating from the, the solids, because the rice flour holds things together better and longer. And the rice flour doesn't add any flavor to this, the way cooked flour would. I want you to see this sauce now. That's what I call the coats, well, what not just me, but everybody calls the coats a spoon stage. It leaves a nice coating on there. It's still a little bit watery, but when that sits, it'll thicken a little bit more. In fact, if I need to, I can always water it down with a little bit of milk or half and half, but I think this will be all right. All right, now that I've got my sauce thickened, I'm going to put my chicken back in and my mushrooms. And then stir all this in. And there is my sauce. No cooking a bechamel or a balsamella. This is ready to go, other than I do need to taste it for salt. It almost always needs salt even though I'm going to be putting Romano cheese in this, so I'm going to adjust this for salt next. And then I can set this aside, put a cover on this, even put it in the refrigerator. When my guests come here, the last thing I'll do is cook my pasta because that pasta is fresh pasta. It'll cook in three minutes, so that'll be easy. I adjusted this from my salt. It's delicious. It's absolutely fantastic. 
One thing is I'm not going to put my cheese in yet. And the reason why is because I'm going to be reheating this before my friends arrived and I don't want that cheese to melt and get all sticky and stringy. So I'll save the cheese until just before I'm ready to serve this. My water has come up to the boil. So there goes my pasta. Again, that's fresh pasta, so that's going to cook in about three minutes. Now I put in my Romano cheese. Again, I don't want to put it in early because it'll melt. This pan is off the heat. There's no, un no heat beneath this. I put the cheese in early, it'll melt and then get, make my sauce stringy. Just want to get it mixed in and then there goes my pasta. And just stir this around to coat it. Ah, that looks fantastic. Now get this onto a plate and see how good it tastes. Okay. Get this onto a plate. I'll put a little bit more of my chicken and mushrooms on top. Sauce is nice and thick, just the way I want it. And there it is. My chicken fettuccine. You can garnish this with extra cheese if you want. I don't think it needs it. I think the Romano cheese that's in there is enough. I did taste it for salt, and I added a little bit of salt. So this is now ready to taste. See how good it is. Okay, I put just a little bit in a bowl for myself because I want to see how this tastes. I really like this. I mean, I love pasta anyways, but pasta in a cream sauce with mushrooms and chicken. Mmm. That sauce is so good. You can mostly taste the oregano, just a hint, a hint of nutmeg in there. Get some of my chicken here. Mmm. -hmm. Okay. That's very good. This is going to be a fantastic dinner this evening. So before they get here, I got to hurry and finish this. So excuse me. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive. Uh, oh. Oh. oh, still recording.